James O'Brien has responded to Jeremy Clarkson's vile comments towards Meghan Markle. Those violent fantasies that he has about Meghan Markle. And I want you to hear what he said, my family. But one thing is for sure, my family. There is a reason why Jeremy Clarkson did it, my family. He did it because he wants this behavior towards people of color to be something of a, of a normalcy within the UK. Because my family, in James O'Brien's, you know, talk show, LBC, something happened. A woman detailed how her daughter, her child, her baby girl was just around with by white lads and feces, you know, excrement were thrown towards the young black girl's hair. My family, first of all, I want you to hear what James O'Brien had to say about all of this. Now, here's what he said kindly, family. I'm just, I, I, I guess I'm looking for differences between generic tabloid jingoism which I'm not excusing, but I'm describing and explaining, and vicious, misogynistic, violent, violent fantasies. I, I, don't, I, I don't know that unwell is the right word to use, although I used it accurately. I think he might be unwell, but that, A, offers an excuse, and B, sort of denigrates illness, mental illness in particular, because a, a massive majority of people who are mentally unwell are never going to conjure up fantasies about parading Meghan Markle naked through the streets of every town in Britain while hurling excrement at her. But I do wonder, I do wonder what would happen if you told a doctor that you were lying awake and I can't sleep, why not? Well, I've got these fantasies, I've got these things in my head, what? I, I, keep, I, I keep seeing, I really want to see Meghan Markle dragged naked through the streets of this country while the British public throw excrement at her. And then the doctor says, well, that's, that's a bit much, isn't it? That's a bit out of the... And you respond by saying, everybody who's my age thinks the same way. Just imagine that unfolding, not in the pages of the Sun newspaper, but in a doctor's surgery. Sorry, talk me again through the fantasies you have every night, the reasons why you can't sleep. Can you just give me some tablets? I don't want to talk about it anymore. No, tell me why you can't sleep. Well... Because I keep dreaming of the day she's made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chant shame and throw lumps of excrement at her. Okay, we should probably talk about this because that's, that's really not healthy, Jeremy. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Everyone who's my age thinks the same way. Nurse? I, 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 I don't know, but it's not normal, except in the context of right-wing British newspaper, right-wing British billionaire-owned newspapers. Except in the context of right-wing owned media outlets, tabloid media outlets owned by billionaires, would that even be published? And it was published by the Sun tabloid owned by Rupert Murdoch, a billionaire who has been described by President Joe Biden as a very dangerous person. My family you know, it's painful, really. It's painful from what was said. It is still painful. My family. And racism, that is what it is. They can't control nor hide the racism. And this person, Jeremy Claxon, has been caught using the N-word Many times. And clearly, this person is a violent person, my family. He's also a violent person. My family, it is not normal what he said. And racism is uncontrollable hate. One that, you know, you, you can't control. One that Jeremy Claxon can't control, nor can he even be able to hide. It's true. He can't control it, nor can he hide it. Even someone called Brand Cathcart said this that, of course, Clarkson's so called apology is insincere. 
He has done this kind of thing before and learned nothing. Because he just doesn't care. Not with employers, the Sun, and the Madoc organization. They look down on all of us as trash to be insulted and abused for their entertainment. Brian Cathcart said, Now initially, there is something that this guy called Jeremy Clarkson had said. More like a non-apology because his comments that are meant to even be an apology, he never apologized to make a mark one. Meaning, he was not sorry about the comments that he made. He wasn't. The fact is, he isn't sorry and he just doesn't care. My family. Now he said this, Jeremy Clarkson, Oh dear, I have rather put my foot in it. In a column I wrote about Megan, I made a clumsy reference to a scene in Game of Thrones. And this has gone down badly with a great many people. I'm horrified to have caused so much hurt. And I shall be more careful in future. Have you had any apology towards Meghan Markle? Have you had any apology? The answer is no. Because he's not sorry about what he said. He isn't. One bit. He is not sorry, my family. He also has made death threats towards Megan in the past. Things that I cannot even have the heart to read myself. I, I don't. I'm sorry, but I don't. Not on this channel. I, I just don't have the heart to read it. However, my family, I also want to say this, my family. This person, Jeremy Clarkson, is not sorry. And it is worth noting that right after he attended a party with Camilla, the Queen Consort, he went ahead to write this about Meghan Markle. Don't forget that Camilla, the Queen Consort, says that she's against violence towards women. However, has not mentioned a word to condemn Jeremy Clarkson's comments, vile comments, in setting violence against Meghan Markle. He hasn't. You know, Camilla has not. She has not. My family. So clearly, he is not apologizing. He is not sorry for the comments that he made, for the vile comments that, you know, he made. You know, even James O'Brien said this on Twitter. And I quote, I honestly can't begin to imagine what the right-wing media would do if someone said any of that stuff about Kate Moulton. And you wouldn't even have to be a public figure if a minor academic or a labor counselor said it. There would be blood. The palace would come out guns blazing, condemning those vile comments. If it were Kim Milton. But because it's Megan, a mixed race black woman, the palace that calls itself, you know, a very much, you know, not racist family, does not condemn, you know, what Jeremy Clarkson said. Instead, they have parties with, you know, Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson. My family, that's what they do. And it's clear that they are part of the abuse towards Meghan Markle. That is very, very much clear, my family. Very, very clear. Crystal clear that they are part of the abuse towards Meghan Markle. My family, there is something also that I would like you to just, you know, also be able to hear. On what happened once again, a woman detailing to James O'Brien the pain of watching her daughter experience exactly what Jeremy Clarkson, you know, dreams about happening to Meghan Markle. My family, it is painful to have to watch it. It is painful to have to see this. It is painful that someone can even say the vile stuff that, you know, has been said and even continues to be said.
it is painful and once again we must always condemn this this comments this evil comments my family when we see them we must be able to condemn it my family we must be able to condemn the hate campaign towards Meghan Markle immediately that we see it we must condemn it and the fact that members of the royal family the farm are not condemning the hate campaign towards Meghan says indeed that they are complicit in those attacks they are complicit in the hate campaign against Meghan Markle that is very much crystal clear my family very very much crystal clear and my family the farm William Charles Camilla are responsible for this vile comments towards Meghan Markle make no mistake about that they are responsible for these vile comments towards Meghan Markle and my family now I want you to be able to to see this from James O'Brien who spoke to a caller who called you know LBC detailing just what happened to her daughter so my family you know that indeed this has everything to do with race everything to do with race my family now kindly just hear this please my family hear this kindly uh, a connection with Pauline's impact and Pauline what would you like to say um, I'd like to um, bring a real um, situation to everybody's focus um, because when I'm hearing James O'Brien in your show on the TV yeah. oh well it's just a laugh um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not hearing that here Pauline to be fair I, I, categorically I'm not hearing people, that in those people that are defending Jeremy, okay. Jeremy's um, yeah. position, um, no one's actually, the British public are um, cleverer than that. Um, they realise it's just um, a, a connection with um, Game of Thrones. No one's really going to strip their naked and throw feces. Yeah, I've heard some of these her. excuses, but I think you and I can agree they're both yeah. pathetic and quite illuminating. Anyone using those excuses is actually quietly quite enjoying Jeremy Clark's misogyny and racism. And I'd just like to um, point everybody to a real scenario with my daughter, oh, yeah. who was a few years ago, um, at the age of 14, um, attacked by a group of young white lads. Oh. She was um, on her way after a fireworks display. I'd let her go out with a group of her and her friends to the fireworks display. And as you know, as they're getting older, you know, you want to give them some kind of little bit of freedom. So I sent her off yes. to, drove, uh, dropped her off to the fireworks display. Within the fireworks display, her and another friend um, got um, lost from the main group. It was a mixture of white and, girl, um, and black girls. Her, uh, my, my daughter is black, and her friend that was with her when they got split up was black. Um, they stayed in a park just trying to um, organise um, where they were all going to meet up. There were a group of boys. They were playing behind them, um, throwing what they thought was a ball, etc. Yeah. Um, my daughter felt something hit the back of her hair. She continued to walk. Um, the boys were her own age, so she, it wasn't that she felt necessarily unsafe. She thought it was lads being lads, as um, people have mentioned on the program and um, when she got up um with and caught up with the group they realized that there was feces in her hair it was actually oh, too bad that the boys were had the phone right. um she was distressed they took her to a um local shop that they heard used the bathroom and they tried to get it out of her hair um when i picked her up my family this saddens me this saddens me a lot this saddens me a lot the experiences of black people in the UK, black children even in the UK, where someone can go and throw excrement towards them. They are meant to humiliate you, to dehumanize you. 
That's the goal, my family. That's the goal. To make you feel so humiliated that you're what that you're worth nothing. By Jeremy Clarkson writing that article, what he wanted also, because I'm sure by now Harry and Meghan must have learned what has happened, what has happened. It is meant to make you feel like feel like nothing, to demean you, to dehumanize you. My family, that is what it is meant to do. But if there's something that I could ever possibly say to Harry and Meghan. Megan, don't let this vile racist ever put you down or make you feel that you're not special. Megan, you are special. We all want you to know, Megan, you are loved. And may God bless you immensely, Megan. And we have your back. And we love you. Please kindly continue hearing this painful story. Please, kindly. Attention seeking, arrogant, just like those lads that threw excrement, excrement at a young black 14 year old girl's hair. My family, hearing this story is quite, quite painful. It pains my heart. It pains my heart so much. You know, how low has humanity gone that? People can be treated so appallingly in this manner. You know, how low? How low? What happened to humanity? Yet you can have the Prime Minister of the UK say that UK is not a racist country. Why? Because they elected... Actually, the guy wasn't elected. He wasn't. He was picked like by 10 people. Rishi Sunak was not elected by the people. He was picked by like... 10 people, 10 people who picked him, obviously with the blessing of Rupert Murdoch. Because for you to be a prime minister in the UK, you have to meet Rupert Murdoch. You have to have a meeting with Rupert Murdoch. For you to be a prime minister in the UK, you must speak to the UK, the owners of the UK tablet media that run the UK. The road is practically everywhere. And this confirms indeed that Britain in the UK is very much a racist country. This confirms it. This story, and it isn't just this story, my family, you know. It is not just this story. Also, the dangers, the harms caused because of colonialism, the fact that the UK was still paying slave owners, the owners of slaves who are paid money for losing their slaves with their final payment being made a couple of years back. That shows you racism in the UK. Yet when actual slaves were tortured, beaten, humiliated, killed, 
their children, the descendants, are asking for reparations. They are not getting paid by the UK. My family, I just feel so bad. I feel really angry and very, very pa pissed, pissed, pissed. I'm very, very angry about this. I'm very, very angry about this. Yet, someone can see Britain is very much not racist. Someone who was picked, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, said that. Someone who was picked by like 10 people and by Rupert Murdoch says that the UK is not racist. My family, this is so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. You know, for you to fix something, you must acknowledge there's a problem somewhere. And the fact is, in the UK, they refuse to acknowledge the problem even exists. You know, the poor treatment of people of color in the UK. The fact that a mixed black woman was hounded out of the country with bullying and abuse every single day. Those conversations, they need to happen and they must happen for there to be, you know, a resolution to the problems. You must acknowledge it. You must acknowledge racism within and inside the UK for you to fix the problem. If you continue ignoring the problem, the problem becomes bigger and escalates and no wonder people like Jeremy Clarkson can go ahead and spread vile comments about Meghan Markle because he sees that there's a market for that because he knows he won't face any repercussions in the UK. He won't lose his job at the Sun. He won't. He won't. That I can assure you. He won't lose his job. My family. And that's why they continue doing what they're doing. Because they know that language is somehow okay in the UK. This hate speech. My family, we must keep fighting against this. We must keep fighting against the hate. We must keep exposing this. We must say this is not okay. This is not right. My family, continue hearing this, please. Um, we forget about that. We forget about the person's humiliation and even just talking about it, wanting the episode to go away. And for me, Jeremy Clarkson is attention-seeking, arrogant, just like those lads. They were having an right. arrogant point about them. And, then, and there is a perversion in what he said about stripping someone well, naked. He's worse, isn't he? Because he dreams about doing to Meghan Markle what was done he's to... Well, what actually was done to your daughter. And, and I, I mean, you know, that they may not have wanted... We, I don't know. Neither of us were there. But what happened is disgusting. You'd think everyone would agree with that. Jeremy Clarkson lies awake in bed at night dreaming of it happening to a woman he's never met. I would say... He lies awake at night dreaming of that happening to a woman he has never met. Keyword, a woman he has never ever met. Majority of those who incite hate against Meghan Markle have never even met Meghan Markle in the first place. Those who claim to have met her with no evidence, I might, I might add, say they only met Meghan Markle once. My family, yesterday I met someone at the restaurant yesterday. Does that mean I spend my time harassing that person every single day? Because, for example, that I call this person doesn't answer. Do I spend my time harassing people Harassing that person because she hasn't called me back. Because she didn't call. Is that what I should do? No. No. <laughs> if I ever lose the thing, police will be called on me. Because I'm a stalker. I'm harassing someone. But in the UK, this behavior is acceptable. In the UK. My family, something needs to happen in the UK. People in the UK need to demand more from their leaders. Need to demand more. 
need to stop clicking on this UKW press selling this hate. People need to stop. When they see the hate campaign, they must call it out. They must call out those people and ensure that it is not lucrative for them. Because the reason they continue to do what they do is because it is lucrative. And that's why they don't stop. That's why they continue. Because it is lucrative. You know, I once saw something even, I think online on YouTube, about this, you know, hate campaign against Meghan Markle, about what, why the press is going after her. You know, someone said that it's because of the very same reason why Meghan and Harry got a multi-million dollar deal with Netflix and Spotify. Because it is lucrative. Because it pays money. They make money from it. Derek Clarkson has never met Meghan Markle. Never in his life has he ever met Meghan Markle. And he'll never meet Meghan Markle. Never in his entire life. Derek Clarkson is a coward. That's who he is. A coward, a coward who wants someone else to act by proxy against Meghan Markle. In his comments that are meant to, you know, incite violence towards Meghan Markle. As I said yesterday, he will never ever harm Meghan Markle himself. What he is looking for, what he is gunning for, is for the trolls. For someone online, someone out there, to do something, to act as a proxy against Meghan Markle. That is what he is looking for, as I said yesterday. And that's why it's important to condemn this language, to condemn this behavior, to condemn those vile comments of hate speech. To condemn the hate speech, it's important. You must not disregard what just happened. Today it's Megan, tomorrow it could be you. Yesterday, the woman speaking to James O'Brien has detailed how her daughter, her child, a 14-year-old Black young girl. Excrements were thrown towards her. And she felt humiliated. Yesterday it was her. Tomorrow someone is asking for, for it to happen to Meghan Markle. Like what Jeremy Clarkson has asked for. He won't do it, for, to, he won't do it against Meghan Markle. Never because he's a coward. He wants someone else to do it. Tomorrow it could be you. Tomorrow it could be your child. We must say no to this hate for profit business model. We must. My family, please continue hearing this. Jeremy Clarkson, um, after what he said, are girls like my daughter safer on the streets from what he said? Are they safer in the parks from what he said? Are they safer from going out to say, for example, a fireworks from what he said? I think he's a bully. The son is a bully. Um, they're not thinking about um, the impact. I can't imagine how Megan Fields is having to even discuss no. something like that. We forget that it's not just embarrassing hearing it, but it's when you have to refer to it in discussions with people. That's humiliating. That's stripping somebody naked. It's per per it's a it is, it is. I, I don't know if unwell is the right word to use because that almost uh, conflates it with, with, son, with genuine illness. But it's, it's, it's sick, right? And it, 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 yeah, you young girls. I, do you know, I've got to be honest with you, Pauline. I, uh, uh, halfway through your story, uh, I was missing the point about you describing what happening to your daughter is what he dreams of doing to make them more. Okay. I, I thought you were just sharing with me a story of, of, of racist abuse, public racist abuse or bullying or, but you, you mean literally saw your girl. Yeah, I smelt the, the feces in her hair. I had to wash it out. We had to wash her hair then wash it again. It's not just a one time event that happens. There's an aftermath and there's an aftermath with Megan. There's the conversation today, there was a conversation Friday, there was a conversation Saturday. Yeah. There's going to be conversations from that. There's going to be when Sam Kelsey's uh, mentioned, 
And somebody somewhere will be thinking, somebody somewhere will be thinking that that kind of behaviour is now somehow more acceptable than it was before he wrote this. If Jeremy Clarkson dreams about it... Exactly. What have other people dreaming of? I'm and maybe that's why he's not taking it the next step further. Now he's allowed this... Um, he's introduced it to public discourse. And, and then to conclude with the line, everyone who's my age thinks the same way. Sounds like he's granting permission. Exactly. She was only 14. I hope he hears this call. Yeah, I hope you are listening, Jeremy. I hope um, Clarkson. And I hope you are listening, the son, editors. You are bullies and you are putting young girls like Jeremy, your daughter, and um, you're putting them at, 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 at a higher risk of harm. Thank you, Pauline. No, Thank no, you I, for listening. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I, I didn't get the point of your call until, until we were a few minutes into it. That's the nature of this beast, I suppose. But my God, it couldn't have been more powerful, could it? It's happened. There you go, mate. It's happened to her. It's happened to Pauline's daughter. You're still going to lie awake in bed at night, dreaming about it happening to someone else? Are you? Problem is, I know men like it. And can never, ever, ever, ever admit it. If there's any apology, if there's any climb down, it will be absolutely undertaken under immense duress. Because to admit to being wrong about anything is to see the whole edifice of your carefully constructed character collapse. The survival personality that you build at, at, at schools like his wrecked in it was and schools like mine, the way that you kid yourself, you're invulnerable, and you turn yourself into some, some, something quite obnoxious, something quite combative, so, something, to use Pauline's words, a bully, all to convince yourself that you're a little frightened boy inside is not frightened, or little. And look at the damage you do, lying in bed at night. Speaking of dreams, so where the Bravermans look closer to coming true, the High Court has just ruled that the government's policy... My family... I wanted you to hear to that part, and my family, you've had the pain of a mother as well. A pain of a black mother. A pain of a, a black young girl, a child, who was thrown excrement towards her. My family, racism, racism is evil, racism is cruel. And I like James O'Brien because he's someone who goes straight to the point and calls out something which is wrong and evil. And the Sun editors, they are bullies. Jeremy Clarkson is a bully, my family. And I'm thankful to all of those people out there who have condemned his vile comments. Thank you. Thank you to all of the people there. Even Mr. Harriman, Harry and Megan's friend, condemned what he said. We must all fight the hate campaign. We must all fight the racism. Because what they're doing right now is making people th to think that this behavior is, is, is okay, is alright. If you don't behave by this behavior, you're labeled, you know, woke, like the WWE media like to use it as an attack, as an uh, as something which they use as an abuse towards you. Oh, you're woke. You know what? I'm happy to be a woke person. Harry and Meghan are happy to be woke. Better be woke than be a racist bigot. Better be woke than write abusive, vile comments online about someone else, about another human being, about a mother who, a couple of days ago, detailed how she feared for her life. How she was working at night just to make sure the doors are locked. That's serious. That's real. And that's the effect that the UK press have had towards Meghan Markle. Painful, right? It is painful. And my family, you know, I just empathize with, you know, the young black guy, first of all, who experienced, you know, racism. Empathize also with the mother because then you have that conversation with the child, with your child, that every black parent in, you know, America or even in the UK will have to have with a young black child a conversation on, on racism. My family, 
It's sad, really. But it is what, what happens, my family. Because of hate, the hate that is in this world. You know, before, before Jesus left this world, before he, he ascended to heaven, there's something so powerful that he said. Very powerful. Beautiful, powerful. Well, before he ascended to heaven. And he said this. Love one another. Love one another. Love each other. He said that. Love each other. With all the hate that is in this world, please do as Jesus said. Love one another. Love wins, as Harry and Meghan say. say. Choose love in your life. Hate never wins. My family, I choose love. Let's all choose love in our lives. Let's condemn hate. Let's fight hate. The battle between good and evil will continue to the end of time. But good will prevail over hate. Good will prevail over evil. And remember Jesus' words. And it makes sense in the world that we live in. What Jesus asked from all of us. Love one another. My family. Fight racism. Fight hate. Love each other. My family. You know, I would hope personally that, you know, the royal see the pain that they've caused and keep causing. And end their actions. Stop what they're doing to Harry and Meghan. I would wish for that to happen. But clearly that hasn't happened yet. I would hope that the UK press stop the bullying of women in the UK like Meghan. I would hope that, but still that hasn't happened. I would hope that the UK press stopped Stop attacking women, but that hasn't happened yet. But I still keep hoping. I still keep advocating for it. And I will never ever stop. I will never ever stop. And my family, that was emotional and that was, you know, painful to hear. But you had to hear it. It's important to hear that. Would you even get an understanding of how? How disgusting and vile those words truly were. And the effects that it has on society. My family, may God bless Harry, Meghan, Archie, Lipidana, and Doria Raglan, and all of you members of the squad at home. Let's keep fighting the hate. Hate never wins. And stay tuned to our next video. Love you always and forever. Hello, members of this is Family TV. First of all, I want to say thank you for all your support that you give us to our channel. We don't take it for granted that you support this channel. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for lending out your support and fighting against injustices, supporting Prince Harry and Meghan, showing them love. Love will always triumph over evil and for that I say thank you. Good will always prevail over bad. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for joining this community, this amazing community of Zesco Family TV. I love you so much, family, from the bottom of my heart. And I wish you all the best. May you have a great, great day. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, a lot of things. With that and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. Leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Love you, family, always and forever. Sayonara.